Uh, good morning, my dear students of class 12 science. So welcome to environmental science class. We are dealing with the chapter pollution monitoring. Let us try to briefly recall what we have learned in our previous class. In our previous class, we are learning about vehicular pollution. Okay, over there we have learned about the causes for excessive vehicular pollutions. Okay, we have learned about urbanizations, development without any proper planning. Clear? Then we also learned that in India, mostly we have got most of the older cars, right, which is to pollute more amount of harmful gases to the air, leading to air pollutions. Then we have learned about the controlling vehicular pollution also. That means how we can control this air pollution, which are caused by the vehicles. And over there we have learned about the inspection and the certification system, where we have discussed about the fitness certificate, which is one of the most important or the requirement documents for the commercial vehicles and the public transport vehicles. Then we also learn about the pollution under control certificate which is also called PUC. These are the two important fitness documents which is essential for the vehicles. Clear? Then we also learned about the CNG program, the use of compressed natural gas in case of vehicles. And over here in case CNG program we learn that the first state, let's say, Delhi was the first one who started the use of CNG from the year 1999, right? So most of the vehicles in Delhi now, they are mainly run by the CNG, by the complete natural gas. And most of the smaller states, let's say, most of the state governments and most of the cities now, they have implemented the use of CNG in their vehicles. So all these things we have learned in our previous classes. Then we also learned about these norms, BS4 norms. You remember Bharat stress norms. We are currently in BS6 norms. So these norms are there in order to control the emission of harmful gases from the vehicles. Then we also learned about the monitoring of atmosphere, which very much essential to ensure that the environment does not undergo further degradation or deterioration. And over there we have learned about the criteria for the site selection of monitoring stations. And we also learned about the different types of stations like type A, type B, type C, type D, type E and type F. And we also learned about the description in detail. So kindly go through it. Okay. Now, today we are going to learn the new subtopic of chapter that is characteristics of ambient air sampling. Ambient means outdoor. Clear, kind of note it down. The term ambient, the term ambient, it means outdoor. So we are going to learn about the characteristics of the ambient air sampling. Okay. So generally what we are trying to do is that we are collecting the air from different sources. The sources can be from the factory or let's say industries or from any other outdoor sources okay where the air is being polluted so what are the five main characteristics of the ambient air sampling the air which we are collecting as a sample from the outdoor environmental conditions okay the first one is collection efficiency we have to collect the air in an efficient manner okay and the sample which is collected the air which is collected must be stable Third one is recovery, fourth one is minimal interference and last one is understanding the mechanism of collection. So these are the five most important characteristics of the ambient air sampling. The air which are going, like we are going to collect as a sample in order to monitor the presence of pollutants in those collected air. So first one is what? Collection efficiency. So we can see that the collection efficiency, the sample stability and recovery must be 100% efficient. Okay, so we have to take proper care while we are collecting the sample. Okay, and those collected sample they must be stable. So sample must be stable. That means that from the time the sample is collected till the time the sample will be analyzed will be monitored there should be no physical change or chemical change in the 
collected sample so first one is that we have to collect the sample in an orderly manner in a most careful manner and those collected sample the air that which we have collected must not undergo any physical change or any chemical change from the time period from where it is collected and during the time where we are analyzing it okay and third one is recovery that means from those sample which we are collected and which we are analyzing which we are monitoring the particulate pollutants okay which are present in the air due to which the air is being polluted must be 100 percent correct so analysis of the pollutants which are present in the air in that collected air it must be 100 percent correct so first one is that there must be efficiency in the collection of sample second one is that the sample must be stable there should be no any type of physical changes or the chemical changes while we are monitoring or analyzing the sample the collected air and third one is that whatever the types of pollutants are present in the air we have to analyze it okay so there must be 100 percent analysis the analysis must be carried out in a correct manner so whatever the pollutants are present in that collected air sample must be totally analyzed clear this one so these are the five important features of the ambient air sampling clear then next one is the basic considerations for the sampling so sample must be representative in terms of time location and conditions to be studied that means whenever we are collecting the sample at what particular time we are collecting the sample that needs to be represented from what particular source we are collecting the sample that has to be recorded that has to be noted and for what particular pollutants or what are the types of pollutants present in the air and what were the conditions during the collection of the sample that also needs to be noted clear so let's see so sample must be large enough for the accurate analysis so in order to carry out the analysis or to monitor the air regarding the presence of pollutants in the air so larger sample should be collected so larger the sample we can analyze it in a better way and we can also observe we can also monitor the presence of pollutants on those air sample second considerations the sampling rate must be such is to provide maximum efficiency of collection so again same thing that the collection of the sample must be collected must be done in a efficient way okay third one is duration of sampling must accurately reflect the fluctuations in the pollution level that is one hourly four hourly six hourly eight hourly 24 hourly sampling so you say that whenever we are collecting the sample the time interval needs to be there okay at a particular time interval we have to collect the air and we have to go for a sampling and this will give us the idea about the fluctuations or the changes that is occurring in the pollution level of the air so at one hour we have to, we can see the pollutants present in the air after four hours after six hours we can analyze the air and we can see the fluctuations of those pollutants which are present in the air next one is continuous sampling is preferred so we have to continuously keep on collecting the sample in an efficient way and we have to continuously analyze the presence of pollutants on this collected air sample and last one is pollutants must not be altered or modified during the collection so there must be no alteration or no modification in the types of pollutants which are present in the collected air ambient sampling or the air sample yeah. so here we have learned about the five most important feature or the characteristics of ambient air sampling ambient means outdoor okay since we are collecting the air from the outdoor environmental conditions then we also learned about the basic considerations for sampling now let us go with the topic the classification of techniques okay so what are the techniques that can be used to monitor or to analyze the ambient air sampling so it is generally possible to monitor the air to analyze the air by different types of devices okay we can use different types of devices to analyze the air the sample which is being collected 
and the types of pollutants which are present in the air that can be analyzed that can be monitored by the help of different types of devices okay now those devices which we can use for the for monitoring the air sample it can be simple or it can be sophisticated or complicated so it depends on us that what type of device we are going to use are we going to use the simple device for analyzing the ambient air sampling or we are going to use the sophisticated devices to analyze the ambient air sample clear so devices there are plenty of devices which you can use but those devices they are simple in use or they can be complicated in use not only that the methods which we are going to use for analyzing the air samples it depends on at what particular conditions it is required to use okay and for what particular pollutants we can use it so it depends on the conditions so the use of devices over here we can say that it depends on the conditions okay like let's say higher the pollutants present in the air clear or from which particular sources the air has been polluted so depending on those conditions and at what particular time it is required we can adapt a particular device for monitoring the air sample okay so in this particular topic only few of the devices has been discussed in details and therefore we are mainly going to learn about two main devices or the two main groups which we are going to use or which we are going to learn for the sampling analysis okay so those two devices or those two techniques has been mainly divided into two main groups one or the first one is called the manual technique and the second one is called the instrumental technique so here we are going to learn about the manual technique and the instrumental technique so in today's class we will simply look at the manual technique of analyzing the ambient air sampling and in the next class we will learn about the instrumental technique of ambient air sampling so what does manual technique means okay so manual techniques are labor intensive they are usually provide limited information but they do not need electricity they are very very cheap they are easy to handle and easy to operate to so look at the features of this manual techniques okay so they are labor intensive there is no need of electricity they are cheap they are easy to handle and they are easy to operate okay and mostly no supervision is required whenever we are using this manual techniques for analyzing the ambient air sampling and since they are very very cheap they can be used in multiple locations to carry out the monitoring of the ambient air sampling so in manual techniques we are going to learn about the high volume sampler and the bubbler techniques so what does high volume sampler means okay so this high volume sampler is mainly a technique which is used for collecting sample for the particulate matter now what does particulate matter means this is very important term. okay what does particulate matter means because this high volume sampler is used to analyze the pollutants which are present or which are suspended in the air any pollutants may it be solid pollutants or the liquid pollutants if they are present in the air then they are called particulate matter okay so particulate matter means those pollutants which can be solid or which can be liquid they are present in the air then they are called particulate matter so in order to analyze to or in order to monitor those particulate matter present in the air we are going to use the high volume sampler technique okay and in this particular technique we generally require a filter okay we generally require a filter and this filter will generally filter the pollutants which are present in the air so look over here it says that the sampler forces a large quantity of air through a filter so over here the air is being passed through the filter the air that contains the particulate matter will be passed through the filter even you can see over here the filter which is being used okay so this is the filter so here the air are being introduced into the high volume sampler now this air contains larger amount of particulate matter and this air are being passed through the filter okay now filter will trap most of the particulate matter present in the air and finally you can see over here the from the blower the air which is free from the pollutants will be released now the sampling is usually done over a period of 24 hour 
Approximately air is drawn in at the rate of 1.5 cubic meter per minute through 20 to 25 centimeter fiberglass filter. So you can see the size of the filter here 20 into 25 centimeter fiberglass filter. This is the dimension or the measurement of the filter which is used in case of high volume sampler in order to remove the particulate matter present in the air. Okay, now. Before the air is being passed through the filter, we have to take the wake of the filter. So the filter is waked before and after the sampling. So before the starting of this technique, okay, before the air is being entered into the filter, we have to take the weight of the filter and after the air is being passed through the filter, again we have to take the measurement of the or the weight of the filter. So the difference in the weight of the filter will give us the idea that how much of particulate matter has been collected so let's look over here so here you can see that this is the particular filter which is being used okay so here you can see that air is being passed so from here the air will be passed the air that contains the particulate matter so the air will be passed to this particular filter now in this particular filter the pollutants will be collected will be absorbed now those air which will be free from the pollutants will pass through this filter will go to the flow sensor and from here the air will go outside the air that does not contain the particulate matter so over here what we do before passing the air through this filter we have to take the weight of the filter and after the procedure will be over that means after the air will be passed through this filter and the pollutants will be collected in this particular filter again we have to take the weight of the filter so obviously we will find the differences in the weight of the filter before the starting of the procedure and after the end of the procedure so that differences in the weight of the filter will give us the idea that how much of pollutants has been collected by the filter that how much of particulate matter has been collected clear now because of the high flow rate larger quantity of particulate ranging from 0.1 to 1 gram are collected over a typical 24 hour sampling period so you can see over here the nearly 0.1 to 1 gram of particulate matter can be collected by this particular high volume sampler techniques which is mainly used to analyze those air which contains higher amount of particulate matter okay then second one is bubbler method so the you can see over the gas bubbler okay so in this techniques what it means that air is being bubbled through a solution okay and it will absorb or react with the pollutants which are present in the air so here in case of bubbler the air is being bubbled through the solutions and that it will absorb the pollutants which are present in the air so most gases can be collected by dissolving them in the liquid and analyzing the liquid so precautions has to be taken so that the no gas will be escaped while using the bubbler techniques so here we have just got the two technique under the manual one we have high volume sampler technique and the bubbler technique okay then the next one is called the instrumental techniques which are more sophisticated or which are more complicated methods of air sampling clear and therefore they are more expensive if you look at the manual one they were cheap right and it was easier to use also but here this instrument technique they are sophisticated they are complicated okay they are more expensive and but they are also more efficient compared to manual one this instrument technique they are highly efficient to analyze to monitor the ambient air sampling but they are expensive and the huge amount of data will be collected when we are using these instrumental techniques but since higher amount data will be collected, it will be difficult for us to analyze those data which are being collected. So under this instrumental techniques, we have got few techniques like photometric technique, we have got non-dispersive infrared technique, NDIR technique, also called, and we have got chemical illuminations. So in the next class, we will learn about this instrumental techniques of analyzing or monitoring the ambient air sampling. So this must, in today's class, we will study this particular chapter in the next class. Till then, stay safe. Thank you.